Hello my soccer universe, it's high time that we talk Europa League. I didn't find the time yesterday to talk about the games, but I also wanted to wait for the draw, do everything and you know, digest it properly. And now let's get to it and let's talk about everything that happened on Thursday evening and Friday midday here in Europe because it was quite interesting. I mean, overall the games that you could say, uh, you could divide into two categories. We had the, we had four games that were either blowouts or where it overall was more or less a blow. Those are very one-sided results. And then we had a couple of tight results where in some cases it really, 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 really got tight and very exciting. I'm looking there especially uh, at what happened in Leverkusen, which was the matchup of the uh, full round. I mean, what happened there, I think will live on in memory, especially in Germany for quite a while. But I think also between Atalanta and Sporting, that was a pretty good tie overall. And of course, at the end of the video, I will also talk about the Europa League draw. I'll leave it for you there, what we will see. But let's go through the games. We'll start in Glasgow. Rangers against Benfica. I mean, typical Scottish rain, uh, pouring as it can, can, can be. And it was what you would expect from these two sides. Benfica maybe uh, technically the more gifted one and with a little bit more idea of how to play. And Rangers brought the fight and the power. Um, it makes for an intriguing tie. However, you always have to think Benfica is just a little bit more experienced side. And the goal came in the 66th minute, initially given as an offside when Di Maria had it to Rafa Silva, who would have been offside higher. He was barely, but he was in his own half running through on goal and making it 1 0. I think there was a chance for Dessas in there for Rangers. I mean, they had their chances, but uh, Benfica had more of the game and overall, I think Benfica deserved to move on from that one, given that they almost got eliminated from the Champions League, now being in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. It's pretty cool. Uh, in Prague, talk about Milan now. A, the Tifo by the Slavia fans. How in Eden, which is the district where the Slavia Stadium uh, is located. So I think I, I really like that word play. In addition, we cast out the devil. Yes, it's against my team, but that's a brilliant T4. Uh, the game itself, I mean, Slavia tried uh, to create a lot of power to get uh, a pass by West Milan. Uh, Mark Mania also injured himself in the process, which, yeah, not very happy about that one. But to be fair, he has not been all that great this year. Also has, has, has to save. And then it turns when Tomasz Holes steps on the ankle of Davide Calabria. Absolutely not on purpose. And I think this is another one of these VAR rules where we, yes, there's a serious uh, potential for injury, but I, I always say a red card. And again, a red card that helps Milan here. I'm talking against it. A red card should be given for uh, attacks that are on purpose with the intent of injuring. This is not for the intent of injuring. Holesch wants to play the ball or is basically inadvertent stepping because Calabria is sli uh, sliding in there. He cannot avoid this. Any case, this turns the game. And uh, it got, it did not take, take long and Leao basically ran right then. He assists Pulisic. I mean, uh, he probably could have taken a uh, shot himself, but his Pulisic is much better located 33rd uh, minute and Pulisic makes it 1 0. That makes it already 5 to an aggregate and all my nerves are basically calmed. Loftus cheek just three minutes later after a nice day uh, cross, just taps it in from a short range. And then just before um, the end of, of the half, uh, Pulisic returns to favor and Leao, brilliant shot. We know, typically Leao goal 3 0, so it's 7 to an egg aggregate, and then the lady slide. And Jurasek pulls on back for Slavia to make it a little bit more palatable scoreline. But in the end, that was easy for Milan. Not something that I would have expected at the first leg, but I was happy to see at least one easy tie in there. If you want to win the Euro the Europa League, then you gotta make statements. So uh, that I think was a little bit of a statement there. Then we got to the almost opposite uh, of the uh, round. Villarreal had a 3-0 lead in the 85th minute after losing the first leg 4-0. And they were pushing. There were the chances there. Yes, one has to also say that I think it was a 2-0 um, that Obama Young 
Want to do it too fancy? Missed a really big, big, big chance to score a goal for OM. Um, and it also has has been said that many, uh, you know, OM did not go with the first team uh, team in this tie. But still, you were on the brink of elimination right there. I mean, Mosquera in the 85th minute makes it 3-0 after Serloth and Capoe had her head rescued. And then uh, Klaus is assisted by uh, Aubameyang in the 94th minute to kill off the tie. But boy, this was a close one. This was a really, really uh, close one. And then, absolutely not close, although uh, many Freiburg fans were hoping was whatever West Ham did against Freiburg. I mean, Freiburg did not probably deserve to win the first leg, but they did win the first for first leg, and you thought they might pull in a performance. However, West Ham pulled in a better one. Uh, Paqueta already scoring early on, had a header from a short distance after Suche cross. Gerard Bowen, one of his typically uh, runs and then shots from from a distance, 30 second 2 nil. That kind of settles the game. I mean, Freiburg then tried to get back into him, Bolon, uh, Gregorich, uh, but in the 50 second minute, uh, Gerard Bowen. Uh, assist Cresswell and then Kudos uh, scores two, the one in the 77th, the fourth one, running basically through the entire Freiburg defense. Uh, it sounds not, it's not as Maradona like, uh, but it's because it's basically straight through, but it's still a very impressive goal. And then lay, lay down here, it's the fifth one, West Ham. That's a marker because Freiburg is not a bad team, but they have beaten them three out of four times that they met this season, with this one being the most emphatic one. Of the uh, late games, I think the one that I look personally looked most forward to is Atalanta against Sporting because already the first half was really good. And I think there are also two teams that match up relatively well with Atalanta having maybe this slight edge. Um, and they also had the slight edge here in the first half. However, a really nice play in the 33rd, 33rd minute where uh, Pedro Gonzalez has the ball, plays the Gökeres, who just uh, taps it on. And uh, Pedro Gonzalez can run through almost a straight line um, to a towards to to goal, tap, taps it in, makes it 1 0 for Sporting. Tini. The teeniest bit against the run of play, I, I would say. Unfortunately, when he take, takes a shot, he injures his upper thigh. I don't know if this broke Sporting, but it definitely didn't help. And you, you, you could see he, he, he was celebrating with tears. Those were not tears of joy. That much is for certain. And then uh, right after, after have a um, uh, cross by Edison is missed by the entire sportsman defense. And Lukman can Iki cross from a short for this and Skamak in the 59th makes it 2-1. And then for a long time, especially when then Kopmans and the Catalera came on. Yes. Um, Gasperini more or less did not play his first team squad in that, that one. So when they came on, uh, Atalanta had a lot of control that only in the last 10 minutes of, of the game when Sporting really got desperate, um, there was the potential for overtime. But Atalanta played at home relatively easily, adding another point for uh, the Italian coefficient, which took a um, hit. Uh, during uh, the champ Champions League with three talents eliminated, however, Italy still first in the overall co co coefficient race, uh, looking good to get a fifth spot for the champ Champions League. Same thing goes for England, because that West Ham Freiburg result was a huge one uh, in that regard. So those two are the most likely ones now to get a fifth spot, but that's uh, for a different time. Leverkusen against Karabakh, <laughs> what a game. The first half was basically Leverkusen, and yes, playing with a 1B squad, let, let, let us say it that, that way. Leverkusen doing their best to miss greatly played attacks and not converting them into goals. It was really that, and I think there was one once in just, 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 just before the half where I think Karabakh lose the ball, then the Leverkusen player could already take a shot. He finds a better uh, position player who was then offside, so it wouldn't count, who again uh, doesn't take the shot, uh, tries to find another, another thing, Florian Wirtz, who then puts it over the bar. That was what was happening in, in the game for a long time. Um, and it was more like that in the second half. I mean, Leverkusen had Karabakh right there. But Karabakh is not a team that is easily put down. We saw that already in the first half. And Zubir against the run of play. But, you know, you got to also appreciate the defending guy that uh, was happening. Makes it 1-0 for Kar Kar Karabakh. And then uh, Jaffa Kiliev is sent off for a red card for holding. I think it's Frimpong who dashes down uh, the line. With his speed, he probably would have been on a one uh, in a one on one. Uh, it's a very slight hold, but I think the hold is enough to trip, trip him up and 
potential de uh, decline a good goal scoring opportunity. It might have been a harsh red card, but I can see why it's been given. So yeah, that seemingly turned the game. And in the end, I think it did turn the game. But five minutes later, Juninho, who already scored a brilliant goal uh, in the first first leg, makes it 2-0. And you think, what is happening here? Leverkusen have not lost for 36 games. Are they going to lose to lowly Karabakh? Well, at least Frimpong uh, pulls one back in the 72nd minute. And then it was power play. I mean, this was power play of the purest order. I've not seen this in a long time. Leverkusen with all the death, the, the desperation, and Karabakh also desperately defending. And two lines in front of their own box. And it was basically all played within 30 meters off goal. Where uh, Leverkusen tried to cutely play out and find and patiently build up. There were no long-range shots almost there, but they never could find the breakthrough until Schick did. From uh, Grimaldo Cross, he just taps it in and goes between a goalie in the 93rd minute. It's 2-2. Which means in overtime. Again, Karabakh losing a tunnel lead to Leverkusen. Again, an equalizer by Schick in stoppage time. But it didn't end there. Schick actually heads in the winner after Palacios with a great tackle. Keeps the attack alive. And then in the uh, upcoming come, come passes, he even then manages to get and cross the chic heads in in the 98th minute. Uh, and there were eight minutes up on the first stoppage time, but the game didn't stop there. There was actually a chance for Karabakh to make it 3-3 and take it further into overtime. Personally, since was, this was the last live match that I had, I was happy that it's not goal to overtime. I could go, go to bed because after two nights of penalty shoot shooters, it got a little bit long. But what a game. And Leverkusen, this Leverkusen team is unbreakable, unbeatable, undeniable at the moment. They have to be considered one of the favorites for this Europa League uh, trophy, that's for sure. Uh, the uh, remaining two games were played also in England and, you know, were relatively, relatively one-sided affairs. I mean, Roma had a 4-0 lead. They, took a, uh, they actually took the lead through a moon bicycle kick with a was not given because of a high boot. A little bit frustrating, but Welbeck scores a pretty goal. Uh, but in the end, Roma hold on and it is uh, Roma move on. The Rossi, the Zerbi really like each other. Uh, the, what I heard, um, the fan chance of Brighton really tried to, in a cute way, antagonize Roma. I think the sign in Italian, the Totti eats pineapple on pizza, just takes the cake uh, for there after the Roma fans kind of uh, offended the Queen a teeny little bit. And then Liverpool, who are the favourites for the Europa League and very decisively so, showed everything. I mean, after 14 minutes, it was 4-0 against Sparta. And this is not a bad Sparta team, but they were completely out of class. I think they tried to play too much with Liverpool. 7th, Nunez, 8th, Clark, 10th, Salah, 14th, Gakpo. Then, actually, Sparta tried to regroup and said, we have to change the way we were playing it. They actually pulled one back in the 42nd minutes for one. I was so much like Gakpo in the 48th and 55th, made a proper scoreline. And, yeah, uh, easy win for Liverpool. So, ahead of the draw, we had now the following uh, chances for the fav favourites. Uh, Liverpool relatively clear ahead of Leverkusen with a distance then to Milan and Roma uh, and Atalanta also a little bit in the Benfica, West Ham and OM more or less the outsiders there. But I think there was a clear top three with Liverpool. I mean, at one in four chance of winning this one, that's a pretty big advantage. So ahead of the draw, I was thinking, who would I like for Milan to play against? And of course, very quickly it came that, you know, OM would be probably one that I wouldn't mind. I uh, Also, I think anything Benfica West Ham, I didn't necessarily want to have an Italian duel, especially if it would have been against Atalanta. Roma was also a pretty big uh, opposition. I was quite certain. I mean, if you have three teams from one country in the competition, more likely than not, you will get a head-to-head -head between those. It didn't happen in the Champions League where all three Spanish teams got separated. However, this time it happened. It happened very quickly. First team out was Milan, second team out was Roma. I mean, it's a classic. It's between two of my favorite teams from Italy, although Milan is the clear favorite here. 
Uh, but yeah, um, I was so and so. I mean, from one side, I'm really looking forward towards these games. On the other side, yeah, I would have preferred probably a slightly lighter opponent. Next one out, Liverpool. <sighs> Dodge that bullet because I didn't want to have Liverpool and Leverkusen. That's for sure. So Roma is kind of the middle road there. And Liverpool play against Atalanta. Yes, we had that in Champions League not too long ago. Then we had Leverkusen against West Ham. I find this a very intriguing tie because West Ham beat just the Bundesliga side very convincingly. However, Leverkusen are a proper side. So I really look looking forward to that. How a kind of mid-table Premier League side is doing against the top Bundesliga side. Leverkusen should be considered favourites uh, there. And at left and the two outsides. A little bit like the Champions League draw. Benfica and OM digging it out. Uh, this is a classic duel. I mean, this has a very um, good late 80s, early 90s feel when those two teams were really in the top, among the top teams in Europe. So I like it for that. I like in the Champions League. I think the draw is maybe a little bit more loaded on the other three games. However, it also kept the three favorites apart. So Milan, Liverpool and Leverkusen are not playing against, the t uh, against each other. But they got probably rougher opponents than they would like, which makes for an intriguing draw. And then the way the bracket set up, we have uh, Benfica and OM playing the win of Liverpool Atalanta. Greatly, as we will see, boosting the chances for Liverpool to move on. I mean, it's uh, very favorable for Liverpool overall because you would, uh, I mean, they would be favorites anyway, but they definitely are favorites against these three teams. On the other side, Milan, winner Milan Roma has to play against Leverkusen, winner of Leverkusen West Ham. Um, of course, I hope that Milan make it all through because that's the one trophy that Milan are missing. Yes, Conference League too, but I hope we'll never get into the Conference League. Uh, but I would say if Roma and Leverkusen make it, this is for a replay of the semi final, which was the last time that Leverkusen lost. So there might be that storyline there. However, however, it happens, I think. This will be the semi-final uh, to look forward to. Uh, if we look individually, how the chances are in the games, I mean, uh, Benfica are slight favorites over OM, which I think I will, will, will agree with, even would give a little bit more to Benfica. So they have not been good. Liverpool, of course, huge favorites over At Atalanta. Milan, slight favorites over Roma. And Leverkusen, also pretty big favorites over West Ham. I think it all sounds about right. Uh, in the overall chances, I mean, it has not changed a lot in the order, but if I look at the probabilities, Liverpool was a 25%, now it's 27%. Because we have Leverkusen, Milan, Roma, the next three teams, all in the same quadrant. And Roma taking probably the biggest hit uh, because they got an opponent where their chances of uh, advancing got decreased. The winners are Benfica and OM, because in both cases, the chances of advancing did increase. So uh, that's good. And um, West Ham, yeah, it took a little bit of a knock, but the order remains the same, but it's much more now geared towards Liverpool and Leverkusen and Milan uh, are, you know, closer together. Milan stayed more or less the same. Leverkusen got a little bit pegged down. The ties, when will they be played? Well, 11th of April, we have all of them. They're all at nine o'clock. So uh, that's uh, all evening games, Milan Roma. I mean, uh, it's the standard tie of this one. Although uh, Benfica OM just for a classic sake, sounds really cool. And Leverkusen West Ham, I think Liverpool Atalanta will probably be very one-sided. However, let's see how things will develop from there. The return like are then played on the 18th of April. And then we know a little bit more already so it's about in a month we know already the semi-finalists as i said i'm not super happy with the draw although milan roma is probably one of those games that i'm really uh, intrigued by uh, it also means that the italian coefficient is bound to grow as well although it probably would have been better if there are three in the semi-final which will not happen in any case, let me know your thoughts on the games and the draw. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.